Hello guys, this is Indian Mirico and in this video we are going to see about multiple pregnancy. This is a concise presentation for medical students. The incidence of twins is 1 in 100 pregnancies. The incidence of triplets is 1 in 1000 pregnancies. The incidence of multiple pregnancy is increasing due to the increasing use of assisted conception techniques. Now let us see about the types of twins. Twins are of two types. They are monozygotic or dizygotic. This depends on the number of maternal eggs involved in fertilization. Now let us see about dizygotic twins. Dizygotic twins are the most common type of twins. They occur due to fertilization of two separate ova by two separate sperm. They are more or less similar to siblings. Dizygotic twins are always dichorionic and diamniotic. That is, they always have two placenta and two amniotic sacs. Now let us see about monozygotic twins. These result due to mitotic division of a single fertilized ova. That is, they result because of mitotic division of zygote. Monozygotic twins can share the same amnion and chorion depending on the stage at which the mitotic division occurred. This picture shows a dichorionic twins. They have two separate placentas. This picture shows monochorionic twins. They have only one placenta. Monochorionic twins can be diamniotic when they have two separate amniotic sacs. They can be monoamniotic when they have only one amniotic sac. Now let us see about the predisposing factors for multiple pregnancy. Increasing maternal age and increasing parity. Family history of multiple pregnancy. Race and assisted conception lead to increased incidence of multiple pregnancy. Almost 20% of in vitro fertilization cases lead to multiple pregnancy. Now let us see about the diagnosis of multiple pregnancy. There will be exaggerated symptoms of pregnancy. The mother will suffer from hyperemesis gravidarum. The uterus will be larger than dates. Ultrasound usually confirms the diagnosis of multiple pregnancy. Ultrasound can also be used to determine the chorionicity. Now what are the special points regarding multiple pregnancy? You should remember that multiple pregnancy is not a normal pregnancy. Multiple pregnancy needs to be closely monitored for congenital abnormality and intrauterine growth restriction. Ultrasonogram should be done at 12 weeks to determine the chorionicity and should be repeated at 28, 32 and 36 weeks to find out congenital abnormality and intrauterine growth restriction. This is more common especially in the second twin. Now let us see about the maternal complications of multiple pregnancy. Hyperemesis, miscarriage, pregnancy induced hypertension and preeclampsia, gestational diabetes mellitus, anemia, antipartum hemorrhage, postpartum hemorrhage, placenta previa and maternal discomfort. All these are more common in multiple pregnancy when compared to a singleton pregnancy. Now let us see about the fetal complications of multiple pregnancy. Perinatal mortality. This is four times more in multiple pregnancy when compared to singleton pregnancy. Congenital abnormality is more common especially in monozygotic twins. Preterm labor. This occurs in 40% of all multiple pregnancies. Low birth weight, placental insufficiency or intrauterine growth restriction. This is more common in monochorionic twins. Twin to twin transmission syndrome is an important complication of multiple pregnancy. This occurs in monochorionic twins. That is, this occurs when the twins share the same placenta. This is because of anastomosis of vessels within the single placental mass. In twin to twin transmission syndrome, one twin gains at the expense of the other. Therefore, one twin becomes anemic and the other becomes polycythemic. Other fetal complications include malpresentation of first twin. This occurs in 20% of the cases. High risk delivery for the second twin is also common in multiple pregnancy. Now let us see about the complications during delivery in multiple pregnancy. Insufficient uterine action, especially after delivery of leading twin. So it becomes difficult to deliver the second twin. Fetal distress. This is also common in the second twin. 
cord prolapse can occur when rupturing membranes of second twin. Logging. This occurs when the leading twin is in breech presentation and the second twin is cephalic. Postpartum hemorrhage and postpartum thrombosis are also common in multiple pregnancy when compared to single twin pregnancy. Now let us see about the management of multiple pregnancy. First let us see about the delivery of first twin. A trial of vaginal delivery is done when the first twin is cephalic and when there are no added complications. The indications for caesarean section in multiple pregnancy are same as that of single twin pregnancy or when the first twin is in breech or transverse leg. It is advisable to induce labor for twins between 38 to 40 weeks of gestation. Continuous monitoring of both twins is essential throughout labor. The first twin is delivered in the usual manner and the cord is clamped and cut. Now let us see about the delivery of second twin. After delivery of the first twin, the lie of the second twin is determined. USG can be used to confirm the presentation of second twin. When the presentation is not longitudinal, external cephalic version can be attempted. Once the head or breech enters the pelvis, the membranes are ruptured, usually by fundal pressure and pushing begins again. If the contractions diminish, oxytocin drip can be used. If the presentation of the second twin is cephalic, the second twin is delivered in the usual manner. If the presentation is breech, breech extraction is done using epidural anesthesia. After delivery of the second twin, the cord is double clamped and cut. Then the placenta is delivered. Oxytocin infusion is started because the risk of postpartum hemorrhage is more in case of multiple pregnancy. If you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comment section. For more such videos, please check out my obstetrics playlist. Thank you.